Sirius XM hits one. Hi, I'm Mikey Piff, and I'm very excited to have someone who be we've been waiting, just waiting to get here because it's you know sometimes it's uh, it's difficult to fly into New York City. We have Lou Kala here. Hi. Now, if you if you don't know her, she has a song "Pretty Girl" or era that we love very much. You you might have seen it on TikTok. You might have heard it on Hits One. Um, but you're from. From Toronto. Yes, I'm from Toronto. Born in Congo, right? Born in Congo, from Toronto, now living in L.A. Now that Oh, you made the move? <laughs> I made the move this year. So yeah. you also might know her from Lottery with Lotto. She's the one who sings the main part. Um, put your hands up. Exactly, right? So <laughs> I don't know you very well other than what we DM, just saying, hey, hi, back and forth, like, we love your song, thanks for the support, stuff like that. Can you share with all of us your kind of the origin story and, and how you got to this point here? Yeah, um, I've always known I wanted to make music. I just didn't know how to make it happen. Um, just being like a girl in Toronto and loving pop music um, and wondering like, how do you like break into the pop market? Because I just didn't see a lot of that reflected in our music industry, I guess, like back in Canada. There weren't a lot of um, pop girls like in Canada that were black and it was just like how do you then like break the mold um I started making like a bunch of trips like I had won a couple of like different competitions like a major emerging artist of the year and I had always written but then I started traveling um back and forth to like LA to like London and a couple of places just to like make connections in the music industry and that's kind of how I met like uh my manager and then uh, long story short, we started just like working really hard and developing until I could be here and start dropping some music. But did you, so were you musical ever since you were a kid or how, oh, like um, how did, like the real, real, like where did the music itch come? nitty gritty. <laughs> no, um, I, t I was, I can't play any instruments. So, um, I can't play any instruments. So I used to literally just sing melodies and write down like songs, like in my book bag. I thought every kid did that, but then I found out every kid did not do that. Uh, people actually had fun and went and played outside, <laughs> you know? So I think, like, doing all of that, like, I used to just work on songwriting, but not really notice, knowing that that was even a job. But it was really on the ride to, like, school every day. My bus driver would always have music playing, and it was pop music. And I just remember being like, oh, my gosh, like, I can't wait till one day I have a song that has a hook that, like, everybody is singing. Um, wait, what, so back. what songs were, were the, was the bus driver, like, bopping to? Oh my gosh, <laughs> like I'm thinking now. <laughs> Everything I feel like from the era of like, you know, like early Rihanna or like early Katy Perry, you know, but also like some Shania Twain. You know, I would just hear like all these songs. I feel like back then you heard a lot of, um, the radio played a lot of different kinds of songs on the same station. So, so we got to thank the bus driver. We gotta shout out the to bus the bus driver. driver. I don't remember her name, but shout her out to her. <laughs> On my way to Jeanne Lajoie to French school, just like thinking, like, how do we make this happen? So okay, so you're writing and scribbling things in your notebook, and what, at what point do you get in the room with somebody and make a song? Because I, I mean, yeah, you yeah like when it doesn't just happen, obviously. It does no, it doesn't just happen. Um, I don't know. I was a part of like a couple different like music programs back at home, and I would just like I would mainly write at home. But then one day I got invited into a session to like work with other people and I didn't know what that was like because I had never written with anybody else. Um, and this is like, within school? No, no, no. This is not like not in I school. This is just like someone DM me or tweet, hit me in the Twitter DMs. It like, all goes down was in like, the DMs. was like, hey, like I heard you like I had performed at a show like earlier that week and they were like, oh, I heard you like perform um, and we'd love to like write with you. And I was like, what, is, what does that mean? Like writing with somebody. I don't even know what that means. And I like showed up to this session and it was so funny because, like, all those guys are, like, really big, like, in music, at, um, especially, like, back home. And, I don't know, we wrote this song. Um, it ended up coming out for, like, another artist. And I don't know, ever since that day, I was like, okay, like, I think I can work on this craft more and, like, make it happen. And performing was what I think opened a lot of doors for me because when people would hear me perform, like, it would just open a lot of opportunities. So let's fast forward a little bit. Um how do we get to Lottery with Lotto? Yeah. Um, I'd started uh, writing the song with some friends, people I really like writing with. And, you know, I just, like, love the idea of, like, 
you win the lottery if you get to be with me you know I think I think everyone needs a self-love like moment uh, where you realize that like you're the prize and like so we had started on this hook um, and then she had heard it and she fell in love with the record and then I got to hear what she sent back and I was like oh my gosh this is so good I literally got goosebumps when I heard back um, her verses on it um, and then we got to collaborate on it in that way you know I added a couple more things she added a couple more things and then here we are lottery is out yeah. wow Hits one on Sirius XM. I'm Mikey Piff, hanging out with the amazing Lou Kala, who you, you might not know quite yet, but you know you might know her song Lottery with, with Lotto and the song that we've been jamming on Hits One, Pretty Girl Era, which, I mean, at this point, like you were saying before, I feel like this is the era, the empowerment era that you're that you're kind of sharing, and this song's a banger. Thank um, you. Um, take us behind this one because this is the song that I mean, obviously, again, we knew you from from Lottery, but then heard this one. And all of a sudden, I was like, yo, this is someone special. Oh, that means so much to me. Um, I actually remember walking into the studio. It was around this time last year. And I don't know what was going on last year, but I was like, I'm feeling really good about myself. I'm like feeling super confident. I'm taking care of myself. I'm going to the gym. I'm doing, starting my skin routine. And um, just and I felt like I was leveling up, leveling up in my career and everything I wanted. And I was like... So I remember walking into the studio and being like, I really feel like I'm in my pretty girl era. And um, <laughs> the people I like wrote it with, uh, they were like, what does that mean? And I was like, I really feel like just so confident, feel good about the person I am. And they were like, let's write it. And I was like, okay, yeah. And I just remember writing that and feeling like, I felt like it was something special. I really liked it. I felt like we've been in like really low down times, especially because of like the pandemic um just a lot going on in the world so i was like i feel like we need something more fun i had been hearing a lot of like very there uh, were a lot of sad songs there's a lot of sad songs we, we sad went on like a three four years strike of sad i was like oh my gosh i was like we need something like positive and happy for a moment and um i just remember feeling really good when i posted it and funny enough like i came to new york um i think it was august of last year and i remember being like oh my gosh i look so pretty today like i want to make a video and then i made like a quick video and I posted it, and then people like instantly started being like, "What's this song? Like, I really want this song." And that kind of took on a life of its own. Feels like an accident, but an accident that was supposed to happen. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're the boss. Technically, it's your song, right? We did, try. Wait, did somebody get mad at you for a second? Like, why did you do that? It's no, not no ready. one. Honestly, no. <laughs> um, I definitely checked with everyone. Like, is it okay if I like post it? But I wasn't even like. It was only funny because I wasn't even posting it being like, this is like the next song. I just liked the song and I thought I looked good on that day. And I was like, let me just. But that's when the magic roll, happens. Let me let it roll a little bit and see if anybody cares or not. <laughs> but that, but that's when the magic happens, when there isn't like this crazy like machine intent behind yeah. it. You're like, yeah, let me just do it. Yeah, sorry, management. Yeah. <laughs> but and then and then now you're here. And now I'm here, you know. So that door that song definitely like opened a lot of doors um for me and I think it just hit two, 10 million today actually. So I'm like really happy. I mean, it's just the start for you. Like for for everyone listening and I'm the music nerd here. I'm the dude that that makes the annoying emails and phone calls like, "Yo, who is this? What's going on?" Uh, before you go, Lucala, I mean, it's been so nice to to get to know you. What um I mean, what what else do you want people to, to know about you? Because at, at this point, let's add some more context. Like, yeah. obviously, like I said, from Congo, grew up in Toronto, moved to L.A., songwriting, didn't know it was a thing. Shout out to the bus driver who uh, <laughs> who played the bops on the way to school that inspired you. What, um, what, I mean, what else What else makes up who you are? Maybe, like, some hobbies and stuff outside. I know it's hard because you're going to be like, I write all the time. I love music. <laughs> but what, what, you, what, what no, makes but up it, more of you? It's only funny because I feel like when you're, you become a full-time musician, like artist or whatever, your whole life is literally revolving around it. Every single like spinning moment is like, okay, like, yeah, we got to go to the studio. All right, we got to cut the vocals. Okay, now we got to, um, I don't know, go out to an event, being an artist. Like It's like a lot of that, but I think just having time away with like my friends, just having like fun, no normal moments, like those make me like the happiest. Also, like, I have to live life to have inspiration to write songs. Um, and I don't know, I feel like I've had a lot of inspiration. Being able to sit at home and think for all those years, you know, like now I have like so much inspiration and I cannot wait for you guys to hear next single. Mm -hmm. But what, sorry, for all intents and purposes, 
when you want to go get in trouble or have fun with your friends, what, what is the doing? dumb? What is the dumb ish that Luke Kala gets up to? Like, is it is it just like a night out at the club? I don't is know. It, is, it, is it like a girl's? <laughs> is, is it a girl's night at, at home and and you guys wear onesies and order pizza or whatever? Like, no, it's it's definitely going out. I feel like I've been outside a lot recently. I'm trying to stay inside, but I feel like yeah, we're gonna go out. We're gonna definitely drink our casa and. I don't know. Well, we we try to make it home by six. You just kind of like six a.m. <laughs> All right, let's go. You don't know where the night's gonna lead you, right? So I feel like life is short. Exactly. You have to just have a good time and go out and drink or not drink and do some activities and just like just have fun. I just go out and I literally let the night take me to where I wherever it wants to go, and I just go with the flow with it. That sounds like like a Wes Anderson movie or something. You never know. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Um, so before you go, you decided to uh, cover a song for us. Tell us, tell us which one you picked and why. Yeah, I picked Flowers by Miley Cyrus. I absolutely love that song. I loved it from the first listen. Um, the musicality of it is so good, and her tone is like amazing. Um, the message in it, like, yeah, we're on, we're like we said, we're in our self empowerment bag. So I can do these things for me. Like I'm gonna be good. I was I was sad for a little bit, but I'm gonna be very amazing without you. So I had to sing Miley Cyrus, uh, "Flowers." Awesome. There are birdies in the room that are telling me that there's a new song coming. There what, is. What What can you share with us? Because it seems like thematically it might fit with, with what we're talking about now. Yeah, I have a lot of new music coming, but I'm very excited for my next single. Because you know, obviously, I'm like the pretty girl heir, poster child, and then I won the lottery. Because or they won the lottery because um, if you get to touch me and be around me, but now I'm even hotter. <laughs> the next thing was called Hotter Now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I cannot wait for people to hear it. Um, and I, think, I don't know. It's another like self love like empowerment about. Um, it's another like self love and self love kind of bop, but it's like different because this one is from the point of view of like a relationship. Pretty girl was just about me. And hotter now is like, oh, you thought I was going to be down without you? I'm even hotter now. Okay. Yeah. So we went from winning the lottery to the pretty girl era to hotter now. Yeah. So I, you know I'll play that on Hits 1 on Hitbound when it when it's ready. I can't wait. And you <laughs> secretly email it to me. Don't I worry, promise. I won't tell. Shh, don't tell my team. 